to learn to live the off-grid lifestyle and to be inspired to live your dreams, click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Click the bell notification. It's all free. So I thought I'd do another video on the wood stove. There is a lot of interest on the wood stove videos. They're doing very well. I was actually very surprised. YouTube is, is promoting them out like crazy. I just don't know why. They talk about your watch time's got to be good and your click-through rate's got to be good and it's just on and on and on. Well, my last video, neither one was very good, yet they promoted the heck out of it. So I thought I'd do another video. Uh, I did a poll uh, just a little while ago. Now, you'll get this video a few days after the poll was posted. And I asked if you enjoy my wood stove videos and overwhelmingly everybody said yes. It was like 85%, which anytime I say, do you like anything of mine, it's like 60%. So I, I thought I'd do another video. People seem to be really interested in them. Now, th this morning it's 71 degrees in the house. Well, it's probably 70 degrees. Uh, last time I lit the stove was about 9.30 last night. It got pretty hot in here. That's what we are doing with this wood stove. Our tiny house is so small that the wood stove just puts out too much heat for it. I'm trying to get it to control down a little bit more putting less wood in and just trying different experimental things. It always changes because right now I'm using Sycamore, which isn't got as many BTUs. I think it's got 24,000 BTUs per cord of wood, whereas Oak has almost 30,000 BTUs per cord of wood. So since it's warmer temperatures here in October and early November, uh, I'm using Sycamore. So when you put in an Oak, it, it changes everything. So you're constantly having to reevaluate what you're doing now of course i'll run the oak firewood when it's much colder outside it gives you longer burn times it gives you longer cold bed like i said i started at 9 30 uh, it's probably eight o'clock now so almost 12 hours last year we kept it running the entire time we had wet firewood it was above 20 percent this is sycamore and it's at 15 percent our oak is probably 18 to 20 percent Everything's in much better shape this year. So last year we had to run it all the time just to keep the darn thing running because the wood was so wet and it was just constantly hot in here. We had the windows open all the time. What we're doing now is much more manageable. We light it up, let it die down, light it up, let it die down. We're saving a ton of firewood. Putting five logs in it. Last night I put four in it. I'm going to try three this time, see if it does any better. Not that I'm having a problem, it's how long that the fire actually burns. What I'm trying to do is get it down to a coal bed because the coals is what actually keeps us warm. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean the window. Now what I've seen, I do this every day because it makes it easier, but what I've noticed, I've tried everything. Uh, I've watched all the videos, I've bought all the chemicals, I've done everything I'm supposed to do, but the best thing I have found is a wet white. You rub some ash on it. And you should be able to see here that there's a stain. You should be able to see that, I think. And so what I'll do is I'll rub this ash. It takes it all off very easily. I mean, this is not a chore at all. It just takes a few minutes, maybe a few seconds, actually. And you don't even have to do the whole thing. You just do the spots that are stained. Now, it's going to be hard for you to see in the camera, but I can see that this is actually stained. This side wasn't stained, it was just that dust. This side is stained, and it's starting to come off. It's a tarry substance. It sticks on there pretty good. And that's all there is to it. You, anything else I've tried has just been a pain. Now the ash is on it, I just take a dry cloth, wipe it off. You don't want to scratch the glass. You scratch it it's going to break. The glass is actually ceramics, it's not actually glass. I've talked about this in previous videos. As a matter of fact, I'll put a video link at the end of this video on some of my other wood stove videos. I'd appreciate it if you'd watch it, even if you don't want to watch it all the way through. Just go do a chore or something, let it run through. It helps the algorithm know that you like this video. So now that's all there is to to clean in the window, no big deal. Don't scratch the glass. If you get the glass wet with it being ceramic, uh, it won't break. I've spilled coffee on it, cold coffee actually. The ceramic can get up to 1400 degrees, 
but it is fragile. A little bitty thing can nick it up. So I have a backup window up, up in the attic. Okay, now a lot of people ask me what kind of wood stove I have. It doesn't really matter. They're all basically the same. This is called a Wood Pro. Last year was the last year they sold it. Uh, they have discontinued it this year. The company is still in business. So if you go to woodpro.com, they'll give you a phone number. You can call and they'll tell you the new brands they're selling. There's three sizes, a 1,200 square foot. This is a 2,000 square foot. And I forget what the biggest one is. So I have the medium one. This is a 2,000. But we bought this used. The guy bought it, used it twice in his garage, said it wasn't enough. So he uh, sold it half price. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, it was $300 we got this for. And they normally go for 600 Even though it's a little big for us, it has worked out really well. Now you'll see that I'm messing with the seals. These are gasket material. Uh, you got to make sure there's gasket material on it. Now on the door, I got gasket material here. That's the actual gasket material that's supposed to be on it. But I was seeing that there wasn't enough sealing on it. So I put uh, this on it. So that gasket rests up against this gasket. That keeps the air from being sucked in where you don't want it. If you open this door, the logs just burst into flames. I did that the other day. I had a log roll over into the glass. And I thought, well, I'll, I'll push that back. So I opened it up. It just exploded into flames. So you want to keep this pretty airtight. So you got gaskets all the way around it. You got a gasket at the window. You might be able to see that gasket also. There's a gasket on the ash box. You can see, well, I don't know if you can see, there's a gasket right here. That keeps air from being sucked into from the house. On the back side, there's ventilation that goes outside. That's where your air gets drawn into. You don't want to draw it from the house because if you're drawing it from the house, then every crack you have in the house is sucking cold air in. So the key to these wood stoves is the smoke. I've said this in previous videos. The smoke is what does all the burning. These new technology stoves are just fantastic. Really efficient, you go outside, there's no smoke coming out of the chimney. So you gotta have these reburners or air tubes hot enough where it burns smoke. So what you do is when you light it, you wait 15 minutes. You close the door, you wait 15 minutes with this vent all the way open. Slowly get hotter and hotter and hotter. After 15 minutes, I'll come up here with a the thermometer. This would be 400 degrees here. Chimney would be 300 degrees. You want your chimney good and hot. You want it above 250 degrees. That way the creosote doesn't stick to the chimney. It also will help burn it off a little bit. You don't want to have a chimney fire. It can actually turn your chimney red hot. It will start glowing. I've seen that when I was a kid, we had a chimney fire. Just, it was just incredible. And I could see the concern on dad's face. Now this Wood Pro, there is a huge disadvantage to, to the Wood Pro. Actually two. One is the ashes are difficult to get in there. They give you a little hole and you're supposed to scrape it into this little hole. You take this little plug out and put it back in. I just can't stand that. So I just opened the, the ash box here. I take my shovel. And I just shovel it out. The other thing I don't like about this wood stove, I actually looked up the reviews on this from Bob Vila. He had the top 10 wood stoves. Wood Pro was like number five. One of the downsides is it's hard to cook on. It just doesn't get hot enough. I've seen people actually can food on top of their wood stove. We can't do that. Uh, Cause there's fire brick in here. That fire brick holds, it's not actually brick. I forget what that's called. But man, it holds the heat in forever. So that's what the, is happening is all the heat's going into the fire brick. Carolyn did cook cornbread on this the other day. She put a pan of cornbread on there, cooked it. Uh, halfway through, she flipped it over. So she put a pan on top of a pan, flipped the whole thing over. Oh man, that was some fantastic cornbread. So you can cook on it. You can warm your coffee, but you're not gonna boil water. We put a pan of water on there, it never boils. So if cooking on a wood stove is your priority, you wanna cook on a wood stove, you're gonna wanna look up the reviews of which ones do well with that. I wish I'd have turned the stove a little bit more because I can't see the flames from my, my desk. I'd always envision just kind of watching it kicking back but laying here in bed at night, because our bed's just right here, ah, uh, there's just, it, it actually just kind of puts you to sleep. It's incredible. One of the things I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try to find logs that will fit north and south. This is called north and south, east and west. If I don't, then I just use my little circular saw and I cut some in half. See, there's one that fits. So I'll put that north and south. There's another one. I got two that fit, that's great. 
And then I'm gonna put, I think one, I've been putting two on top here, but I think I'm just gonna put one. Okay, so I've waited the 15 minutes, so now I'm gonna push the vent all the way in. Now, since this is one of the cheaper models, it takes a few seconds or a few minutes for it to really die down. But we're actually starting to see it. That's kind of incredible. The really expensive ones, you know, the thousand, two thousand dollar stoves, somehow they can control it where it's like an electric heat, where you push the vent in and it instantly decreases or instantly increases. Uh, the cheaper models react slower. Now, what we're going to see here, and I can see it already, is the smoke is going to start burning. So you're going to see little dancing blue flames. I'm sure you can see that. I, I really, right over here, it's just out in the middle of space. It's just dancing. As this dies down more and more, the smoke will burn more than the logs. So the air tubes at the top suck air in. Right now you'll see that I have these logs split out. Right here is the front air vent, right there. And it's just a little pinhole. So you don't get a lot of air from that. That's just to get the thing going. Once it dies down, then all the air starts to come in into the air tubes and you can see all those dancing blue flames. I, I hope you can see that because... So if you'll click on this video, you'll learn more about this wood stove and all the things I've learned about it. It also tells the algorithm that you like this video and I really would appreciate the help. I hope I can inspire you to stay warm when you're living your dream. Thanks for watching.